Hello YouTube world, MacDaddy1911A1 here with the Shade Tree Survivalist. The video I'm doing now is on the contents of my backpacks. Um, there's going to be two parts. The first part is my, uh, what is called a three-day assault pack, which in my opinion may be a day to two days max is about all the food you could haul in this thing. But uh, Scout has been wanting me to do this video forever and a day, and i just been farting around and haven't done it. Um, well, I actually have. I've, I've tried it two or three different times, and it just never came out the way I wanted it. So we're going to try it again, and hopefully it'll work out for us. Um, but here's my little small backpack, and what we're going to do is do the exterior contents first, and then we'll um, do the interior contents, everything that's inside the backpack. Of course, it's just a small one. It's got a large pouch, exterior pouch, and then a main compartment. It's got molly straps on the side so you can attach pouches. And right now I have one double mag pouch for an M14 AR-15 on the uh, right side of it. And then on the other side I've got a pouch for the canteen. I always carry some rope. This is 3 8 inch rope. It's designed to carry up to 250 pounds. Um, I have a, um, it's not really a D-ring, but I've got a link inside the backpack to use to hook it to your belt or whatever the case may be. Um, I also carry a military uh, flashlight and even though they don't put, you, put out very much light you can use them to signal with and we were messing with this earlier and there we go you can flash and signal with it and so forth. Um, it has three different lenses that you can place the scatter lens, the uh, clear lens with. One is red so it doesn't run your night vision if you're trying to read a map. One is blue, which will highlight uh, certain types of ink on your maps. Then you have a, a solid white one that you can use to signal with where it won't carry too much light. All right, next thing is a small little cheap Smith & Wesson tactical folder that I just simply carry as an emergency backup and the, the, the little clip on the back will hook into the webbing and it's just basically an emergency backup blade. And then of course, M14 magazines loaded that go in the pouch. Then we have a one quart US military canteen, a standard without the uh, respirator uh, cap that you can hook a, uh, a gas mask up to. Um, then we got a standard um, GI issue canteen cup. These two items are invaluable. Number one, you can use the canteen to refill your Camelback, and you can use the canteen cup to cook soup and stew and whatever the case may be, coffee, tea, or just boil water in it to uh, sanitize it, to uh, kill the bacteria and whatever else might be in it. Um, the little pouch on the side of the canteen cover, um, I use the... Uh, it's not really, I don't think it's iodine. I'm not even gonna to try to pronounce that. But anyway, water purification tablets, as well as the PA Plus neutralizes the bad taste. So I got those two items in there. Then I've got a little type uh, wool mummy sleeping bag. This is basically for, you know, down to maybe 60 degrees. I would not want to try to, to be, uh, to, to sleep in it any colder than that because it's really not that thick and it's not big enough to, to really pull it tight against your body so it's not gonna really hold much heat. Um, Scout and I went on a uh, overnight camping trip here, I don't know, a couple of months ago, maybe last year, I don't remember when it was, but it started raining that night. I had this and I stayed fairly warm and he froze. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next item and the last item on the outside backpack is the um, Camelback carrier and the Camelback that's in it. And uh, I'm able to attach it to the backpack using the straps that are on it. This is a U.S. Marine Corps issue version and it works really, really well. I like it a hell of a lot. So that's the first items or the items for the exterior of the backpack and we'll pause it and continue. Part two, the, in, the internal contents of the backpack. We're going to start with the exterior pouch and work our way into it. Spare pair of pants. A necessity, and I think, and I'm wrong, I thought I had a pair of socks rolled up in there, but I do have spare socks. 
you uh, this may or may not be cons you know be necessary but um, every time we go out scout and I we always wind up going through the creek and getting wet and having a spare pair of socks to dry your feet out um, to put on at night when you're asleep and dry clothing is a necessity as far as, far as I'm concerned so that's item one spare clothing um, extra ammunition all right, I always carry spare ammunition. If I don't have enough room in the magazines and I feel like I need to carry more, I always have extra boxes. Uh, let's see. Now this little pouch here, this is made for like a trapper keeper or whatever for the kids at school, but I carry all kinds of extra spare items that I might need. One being brand new Surefire batteries for the Surefire flashlight. I think, um, Scout, yours is uses the same ones, right? The one, two, threes, Ooh. the one, two, three, A's. Okay, got two packs of those. I tried to carry them in the right on the rifle, but there's just not enough room in the dang gun pistol grip. Okay, and we got two of the cord keepers. You know, you put your uh, 550 paracord through there, and then you let off of it, it's spring loaded, and it sort of keeps the cords. I got two of those spares. We've got the little El Cheapo D rings that you can use for lashing gear to your backpack or whatever the case may be. They're not camouflaged, so I keep them inside, but if the need arose, I would have them. Another redundant capability. This is my old timer knife that I've had for years and years. And this one here is freaking razor sharp and will damn sure cut. Um, but I gotta have that redundant capability. It's, it's got the heavy brass ends. I've used this thing to, for really light hammering jobs and so forth and it's beat up but it works like a charm as you can well see all right i do nope there's another cord keeper there's three of them total that's in one side of that pouch now let's open up the other sharpie marker for leaving notes now you got to remember this is not necessarily just for military applications or tactical applications this could be a survival application where you need to leave a note for your significant other, your children, whatever, saying, I will be going to such and such a place. If you happen to arrive here, that's where I'll be. So you can leave a note with that, mark on your maps, whatever. Emergency blanket, just in case, okay? you uh, Maybe not necessarily that you need it, but maybe someone else, if it's a survival situation, needs to have some cover. This is a Mylar blanket is what that is. All right, um, there's two items in here. I'll go ahead and take it out and show you guys. Um, well, actually, it'll actually be four, considered four items. But this is for eating, okay? You got your stainless steel spoon, little tiny fork, uh, and a little tiny knife. And they all go together and go into the little ring down here at the bottom. If I can get it to start. And this is something you don't necessarily have to have because the MRE mills have that heavy duty spoon and so forth in it. But in a long term survival situation, it might be a good idea to have something like that. And this is the, what is it, P35, P38 can opener. Okay. So if you can open bottles, the old style bottles, and of course open cans with this thing. And in an emergency, the end of the handle could be a little teeny tiny spoon. <laughs> so that's the contents of that. And I'll set that aside. What else we got in this thing? We got one of the freeze dried sweet and sour pork mountain house meals. Scout has uh, brought some of these on our camping expeditions and these are really good. I mean, I, I couldn't believe they were actually as good as they were. An MRE heater, okay, to, meet, to heat up your meals, you simply add your meal into the sack, your main entree, you put the correct amount of water, you fold it and let it sit for about 15 minutes and it will be good and hot when you are ready. And this is the little cardboard that you stick it in to keep it from burning you and to hold the, to trap the heat in with it. All right. I had... Um, the last time we went out, I think I actually had an MRE, and uh, I just kept that as a spare. Um, 
little headlight. This thing works really good. I have had it for years. It's big, it's bulky, but it works. And why replace it if it works? And um, the only thing is, of course, white light will give away your position in a tactical situation. So you may not want to use this. Um, you'd want to use the military flashlight in a tactical situation with the red filter lens. Um, however, even with the red filter lens and infrared night vision goggles and so forth are designed to, they'll see that light. Okay, so just a heads up to you on that one. Next, hot diggity dog boy, got some Crown Royal. Hot damn, we're going to be drunk as hell here in a minute. Uh, no, not really. This thing here, I've got um, string. I've got burlap for camouflage. You may or may not need, I mean, think these items would be critical, but you never can tell when you might need some of this stuff. And so I carry, you know, cordage is basically what it comes down to. And you just never can tell what you can do with all that. Doesn't weigh anything, doesn't take up much room. So there you go. All right, here's a big, what do you call these? This is not really a D-ring. It's a snap link, I think, what you call this. And they designed these um, so you can put your chain through there and hook it to the bumper, uh, hook your trailer to the bumper of your vehicle, and it's a safety link so that if it becomes undone from your ball. And I figured if it's good enough for that, it would probably work well for uh, rappelling. It's uh, safe work load limit is 425 pounds i am nowhere near in that that range so there you go got that for helping me to repel that's not the only one um got 100 feet of 550 paracord i mean cordage you know building uh shelters um making traps all kinds of different things booby traps that 550 paracord comes in handy so maybe that's the double redundancy. Maybe I could take this old cordage that I've been saving for years out. But I just like having a redundant capability. And it's made in the USA. I like that. Remember I was telling you about the uh, MRE spoons? These things, is, I mean, they're tough as hell. Mm -hmm. And there's an MRE spoon. And that is the contents of the exterior. Don't look so bored, Scout. You remember, you've been pestering me about this for ever, ever and a day. Medical kit, okay, big first aid kit. Now this one here is a jungle first aid kit. I've added some items and taken some items out, but I will not get into details on that because there's a lot of little stuff in here. Needless to say, there are swabs, uh, alcohol swabs for uh, sanitizing wounds and you know things of that nature, bug bite, remedies, blah, 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 uh, bandages, band-aids, um, all kinds of different things in this. Definitely need a first aid kit. Next item is the camouflage mask that I did in my, my camouflage series. Um, when Scout and I went on our very first long range patrol, um, I wore this thing and within five minutes realized that this is a bad idea because I'm moving my head, I'm trying to scan and these fake leaves they're made out of some type of a plastic, I would imagine, and they are so damn noisy. For a static position, you're behind the scope of the rifle, whatever the case may be, this would be okay. But on patrol, totally useless. But I keep it in here, and I keep my little red dot, my little Siemens red dot scope wrapped up in it, so it sort of helps protect it. So those are two items right there. Next item. You gotta take a dump. <laughs> you better have something to wipe your butt with. Because if you grab the wrong damn leaf and wipe your butt with, you may be in a hurt locker real quick. That poison ivy will tear you up. All right, basic hygienic hygiene kit. Now I'll go ahead and open this up and take this out. I mean, you need to. Toothpaste. Toothbrush. Two razors. Look, okay, let's say you're on a run, okay, for whatever reason, and you need it, but something comes up, you need to get some medicine, some food, whatever, you need to go into town, okay? You need to clean yourself up. 
you don't want to look like whatever. You don't want to draw any unwanted attention if at all possible. So be clean, being able to clean yourself up is a good thing. Triple antibiotic for skin, hydrocortisone for rashes and so forth. These are good items to have. And this one here, I've got it in a separate, a separate bag from like my soap and all, simply because these are items that should be near the top of your backpack because you're going to use them at least once or twice a day. I recommend you take the caps on. All right, this has got the little snap open cap. I taped it up so it wouldn't pop out and squirt the damn gum crap everywhere. And it's in a good heavy duty Ziploc bag. It's probably got some punctures in it, I would imagine, but. You know, you don't want to get it too muddy or any contaminate anything, whatever the case may be. Onward up one. Poncho. This is one of the items that I bought at the spur of the moment, but this is a cheap civilian hunting version. It's just that vinyl. If you're not patrolling through the woods or stationary, this will be fine. Just keep you dry. Um, this would be a good ground sheet to lay your uh, sleeping bag on if it's wet weather. It's a good survival shelter, okay? You can make a shelter out of it, but it is not very durable. The thorns and so forth will eat this stuff right up. It'll cut it like a freaking knife. So, Scout and I, one, at, uh, if at all possible, this year we will be purchasing military uh, ripstop um, ponchos and hopefully get the liners with them also. But poncho is absolutely necessary. Unless you live in a freaking desert and don't expect it to rain for a hundred years. Some of the tree bark, the cedar bark that um, Scout got for me for making a fire. Got in a waterproof container, a uh, little bag that Camo, I swapped from Camo, she threw it away and hey, I'm going to keep it. I don't care what it looks like. Camouflage netting. Camouflage netting comes in handy for making a hide if you're on a sniper position. Uh, you know, mission. It makes it makes um, you know it's a good idea to have this to, um, to camouflage your, uh, your, your your tent, your uh, your shelter, whatever the case may be. So it's a whole, have a lot harder to find you. Also, you can wrap up your optics in something like this, and it will protect it from any damage. Onward and upward. Let's get the big item out. This is my El Cheapo Siemens uh, spotting scope does a fairly decent job but it's not a very well designed scope and we'll do a really quick review of it. His balance point is somewhere in the neighborhood of here and they've got the pen, the point for your tripod back here. As time goes by it's so front heavy it'll do that number right there while you're trying to spot with it. It sucks. Um, but it's 60 power and it cost me 50 bucks and you can spot shots with it pretty good, but as far as anything else, it's too big, too bulky, and it's just not the best quality for the intended mission I have in mind. So we will be replacing this eventually. Next item, dryer lamp. What the hell? Dryer lamp is excellent for, for helping, st helping start fires. Okay, so doesn't weigh anything and it's free. You just clean out your freaking uh, the uh, filter on your dryer. There you go. It helps really good. In the field, if you are desperate, you are out of survival equipment, you can find it in your clothes, the pockets. My belly button is the dryer lint capital of the freaking universe. I promise you. Every time I take my shirt off, I got lint in my damn belly button. So, but really, no, seriously. It's really good to help start fires, okay? On the other side, we got some of the uh, Coleman Strike A Fire Fire Starter tabs or sticks, whatever you want to call it. These work fairly well. I did the, one of my very first videos was proof of concept making a fire in the snow. And I use these here and they work really well. All right, onward and upward. And I, I don't know why I've left it in the bag, but that's a complete MRE. This is the brisket entree menu number seven. Uh, Self-explanatory, I hope. Back when we first started the channel, I did a review on this. This is a um, Coglin's Sierra saw, the 180 saw. This thing is the bomb. It will really do the job. 
and when I was doing the handyman thing, I used this thing every freaking day, it seemed like. But it is a very, I mean, it's just an awesome little saw worth every penny. I think it was either 10 or $15 I paid for it. It's worth every penny. It worth three times that, in my opinion. It, it works so well. A hell of a lot better than that Ger Gerber Versasol deal. Spare pair of socks. One of the MREs hot beverage bag. I didn't ever use that. Some of the stuff that I didn't use out of my last MRE that I opened up. This in here is French vanilla cappuccino powder. These two items go together. Uh, nutrition, a force multiplier. Let's see, what is this? Cornbread stuffing from an MRE. The Link, I don't know what the hell kind of what they call these things, but this is also would be helpful in repelling. I should put those two items together and uh, some wipes for wiping your hands. And I don't have my damn soap in here, so I need to get another room and stick in this one. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen, the entire contents of my 3A assault pack. And while I've got all this crap out, I'll probably uh do some moving around and adjusting and adding and subtracting stuff. Maybe this has helped you some way, shape, or form. Maybe uh, it'll stop Scout from pestering the hell out of me. But anywho, this is MacDaddy1911A1 with the Shade Tree Survivalist. Thank you very much for watching.